Hey everybody, I thought I'd make a really quick video going over some tools. Uh, like I've written there, I have received some feedback from employers just asking that this is a little bit more of a point of emphasis. So again, I'm, I'm going to make this pretty brief. Um, I couldn't really get this to upload to Moodle the way that I wanted. But if you click on tool images there, you can go through each one of these individually. Or you can go down here to download folder. And that should bring up. The entire folder that you can view. So let's go over a few of these really quickly. An opened in wrench. I think one of the questions on the quiz this week asks you uh, if you have to get to a nut or a bolt from the side so you can't get over top of it. So open end as the name implies. And then second one we have here is a boxed end. A uh, lot safer, a lot less likely to slip if you can get it around the bolt or the nut, whatever you're you're trying to access if you have the room and can get it around it. Um, I prefer that to an open end. I've busted my knuckles with open ends a few times. Six point and twelve point. Depending on application, obviously a six point is going to get a better grip of the six point bolt or nut that you're trying to access. The twelve point, if something is slightly rounded, um, both of these tools you'll find yourself using. Both of these you really should own or be supplied. This is a combination wrench with an offset of 15 degrees. They make these in several different varieties. Um, I've seen them up to 30 degrees. That's most that I have ever used, but you can see the degree wheel and the offset. Here's just a standard old adjustable wrench, but a couple of things about an adjustable wrench. Here you have an image of the way it should be latching around the nut. So see how we are straight here and straight here against the flats of the nut and in this next picture you can see not so much right so that's when we're going to slip off of it an adjustable wrench is a really handy good tool uh, the guys that I work with at Altec do a lot of boom work so they don't want to climb upstairs or up steps to access the top of a boom or a platform or a digger derrick or whatever now, oh man, I got the wrong size wrench. I got to go back down, you know, up and down, up and down. Try to limit that as much as they can. So they use them, they use adjustable wrenches more uh, in the industry I'm currently in than I probably ever did. I just threw a bunch of stuff out and would grab it. So if you can access the right wrench for the nut or the bolt, I prefer that. But again, it depends on what you're doing. There's nothing wrong with an adjustable wrench as long as you're using it right. And remember that you turn it just like chan locks. See how they're swinging it, in this case clockwise, so that you're putting the force of turning the bolt against the strong side of the adjustable wrench. You want to try to prevent from going the other way because then you're putting the stress on the thumb wheel here, if that makes sense. Chan locks, if you look at a pair of chan locks, they're the same way. Um, you want your motion or your, your stress points to be on the thickest part of the tool. This part is made for that leverage. We always call these line wrenches. This is a flare nut wrench. Um, and there's a reason we call them line wrenches. They're most often used when you're trying to get a line off. Don't put just a regular uh, open or adjustable in adjustable wrench on a fuel line, brake line, hydraulic line. You've got to be really careful there. The, the, the point of emphasis here is the tighter the grip you can get on whatever you're working on use that tool for that job I don't know that we have to go through some of these or all of these I mean some of them are you've probably used a ratchet before we called these broke necks that's my name for it it's a flexible head ratchet very handy tool uh, you break some, you've got enough leverage here to break something loose and then you can get enough angle out of it to spin one of my favorites there here you have a flexible headed breaker bar. I think we've got a ruler beside of it. I can't read here, but um, as as uh, was it Archimedes, as as it was once said, if you give a man enough leverage, he can move the world. Uh, the longer the breaker bar, the more leverage you get. Very good tool. If you find yourself trying to use a standard ratchet to break something loose, and you're you're gritting your teeth and it's too tight, just stop. Um, any job you have they're going to want you to be safe and mindful and I know in this week we've some of the assignments I've uploaded have been on job hazard analysis and 
being mindful of the job before you begin the work, well, that, that process goes through the continuation and to the end of your work. So if you find yourself straining, uh, just remember, hey, man, what am I hurt myself for here? Let's go get this big old breaker bar. You may not use these a lot. I guess it depends on where you work. I, most of these old dial style um, torque wrenches for what, I've used has been for say rotating torque um, in a gear set if you've preloaded your bearings and you want to see how much torque it takes to spin it now that you've uh, preloaded the bearings you'll use one of these you can use it just as a regular torque wrench but um, they've made advancements in those they're digital the click style torque wrenches it looks like one there and a deflecting torque wrench yeah, that's that is. I'm sorry. That's a that's a click style. So you've probably used those where you're going to set it to 85 foot pounds. And remember when you're torquing a bolt, you good even motion. And then when the torque wrench clicks, that's it. Don't go. Don't click it five times. No, one click, even pull, click click. It's done. If you're using a beam style, when it hits your 65, 75, whatever you're torquing to, when you hit that spot, it's done. I know, I know most of you have probably used these tools, and if you've used both of them, you'll have to agree. Click, click is a whole lot easier than trying to watch this thing. But again, there are applications for this, uh, specifically a rotating torque or measurement. This is just showing a quarter inch ratchet. Very good tool. Gets in the places that some of your three eighths and half inch aren't going to go. Screwdrivers. Won't zoom in on them. Um, and I'm not going to add much to them. Just remember, just make sure you've got the right one for the screw. That it fits good. That's I can't add much more than that. Make sure it fits good. Round and shank screwdriver, flat tops. Offset screwdriver. I own one of these. I haven't used it a whole lot. I, I do have one that has a thumb wheel. This small part here is separate. Uh, and there's a spinning thumb wheel that ratchets here. It's it's only maybe an inch and a half long for the total tool. It's pretty darn handy. Uh, lineman's pliers. See if these are crimp style. Uh, electrician or lineman's pliers down here. And they call these iron workers pliers. These should have cutters inside of them. So you can cut and crimp. There are some straight and curved nose needle nose pliers. Also, as with many other tools, um, I have one set of these, and the handle is about five times longer than that. The more leverage, the tighter you can grip. Uh, these things will slip on you too. Slip joint pliers. So you have two different settings there, and different sizes, different app for different app different applications. See how it slips on that little lever there. Here's your chain locks. So again, if we were going to be turning a bolt, we would want to be, if the bolt, the chain locks were sitting on the bolts the way this is, we would want to be spinning it to, or clockwise. So that we're putting the force on the actual part that's holding. If you're, if you were to spin this counterclockwise, yeah, you're probably going to get there, but this is going to be way more likely to slip because your leverage and your holding force is going to be right there. Vice grips. Worked with a guy. Real, 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 real quick story. Um, threw a set of these one time at me in my bay and said, I'm done with them. They pinched my fingers for the last time. And about a year later, I threw them back to him. <laughs> Use these tools. They're great tools, but they're, they're going to get you. It's just inevitable. They're, they're going to slip. They're going to, they're going to get you, but very good tools. There's a ball ping hammer. Not much to add there. Uh, center punches. So a center punch, uh, if you're going to drill, let's say a bolt's broken off and you're going to have to drill it out. Don't hit it with a drill bit till you hit it with a center punch. Find the center of the broken part of the bolt. Smack it with a hammer. Get your midpoint and then you can start drilling. Uh, use. I've always had pretty good luck with left-handed drill bits. They work really well to get a broken bolt out. Different types of files. Uh, there's a question about finish work. So if you're going to do any kind of finishing work, you would want to do some, just like with sandpaper, you want smooth on finishing. 
I'm not going to say this word, <laughs> but this is a pretty ag uh, aggressive type of file. Again, like sandpaper, you're, you're going to use a different file for a different application. We'll go over all of the files. Different file shapes, depending on, you know, you've got triangle, triangular, round, square, depending on what you're doing. I really see that one enough. Skip it. I think that's about all. Uh, ruler. I was going to say I think that's about all that's relevant, but um, I know having raised three kids here, that's there's an acquired art to learn how to read a ruler. So remember, each one of those little lines is one sixteenth of an inch. The next biggest line is an eighth, so we usually break it down into quarters. And two quarters is a half. Two halves is a whole. That sounds easy, but um, I know when I do a little bit of carpentry work here, there's only one ruler that I want to use because it's the easiest one for me to read. It doesn't have the uh, one, the fraction number on the ruler, but I can see the lines on it better. So I know each one of those is a sixteenth. It's just a bigger print. More with ruler. I think that's about all I wanted to go over. I really just wanted to show the hand tools. I'm going to go over 100 rulers here. Drill chucks. See, um, there's two different styles here. There's this style that would be on a lot of your cordless stuff that you hand tighten. They work, and they work well. If you're going to do some really heavy drilling, you might want the chuck type here. In any case, you don't want to hold this with your hand and hit the button and make it spin and lock it by holding uh, or by using the drill as your inertia to clamp the bit inside of it. You want to tighten this by hand. You want to tighten this one with your chuck uh, tool off. I've seen a lot of people cut their hands by trying to hold it right there and hit the button on the drill and make it spin until this goes. And man, if you're not careful, that right there will really, really tear you up. Bandsaw. using a portable bandsaw and a grinder. Uh, main thing with the grinder is be careful with the cord. Remember it's usually plugged up somewhere. <laughs> and again I, I just want to take a few minutes and go over those. Uh, this week's assignment deals with that and an intro to OSHA. If you have any questions at all send me an email or send me a message on Moodle. Thanks. Hope you have a good week.